Deep within the heart of Africa is a mysterious and marvelous world just wants to be discovered. Every step brings us closer to discovering the truth about this fascinating continent, from ancient treasures to unusual events. So join us as we unearth some of the most astonishing and mysterious findings ever made in this country of mysteries, because now is the time to be astounded by the intriguing findings uncovered in Africa. Oldest Dinosaur Fossil Back in the summer, paleontologists found the oldest dinosaur ever found in Africa. This was a very exciting find for the people who like dinosaurs. The animal, called Mabirosaurus rothi, was about 6 feet long, weighed between 20 and 65 pounds, and lived in what is now Zimbabwe 230 million years ago. Fossil research showed that it was a type of sauropodomorph, which is related to sauropods. It walked on all fours, had sharp teeth, and had a long neck and tail. The skeleton was found during two trips to the Zambezi Valley in 2017 and 2019. Dr. Christopher Griffin from the Virginia Tech College of Science said, The discovery of Mibirosaurus rathi fills in a critical geographic gap in the fossil record of the oldest dinosaurs and shows the power of hypothesis-driven fieldwork for testing predictions about the ancient past. These are Africa's oldest known definite dinosaurs, roughly similar in age to the oldest dinosaurs found anywhere in the globe. The oldest dinosaurs we know of lived about 230 million years ago, during the Carnian stage of the late Triassic period. They are very rare and have only been found in a few places around the world, mostly in northern Argentina, southern Brazil, and India. Homo nelidi The finding of hundreds of fossils of Homo nelidi was the biggest fossil find ever made on Africa. The fossils show a unique mix of modern and ancient traits that are shaking up our ideas about where we came from and how different we are. Homo nelidi shows once again that we can't think of human development in terms of ape-like ancestors gaining more human traits over time in a straight line. Instead, different kinds of humans developed at the same time and lived together, sometimes side by side. Homo nelidi is a mystery in many ways, such as how the bones got into the caves, what its tools were like, and how it lived with species with bigger brains. So far, remains of Homo nelidi have only been found in the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site in South Africa, which is about 40 kilometers from Johannesburg. Cave explorers found the first evidence of Homo nelidi in a small, hard-to-reach room deep in the rising star cave system. Lee Berger, a paleoanthropologist, put together a team of archaeologists who found more than 1,500 fossil bones from at least 15 people, ranging from babies to older adults. After that, a search of a second room in the same cave system, which was more than 100 meters away, turned up another 130 fossils. The body of Homo nelidi showed a unique mix of human and non-human traits. Professor Stringer said, the hands, wrists, and feet of Homo nelidi are very similar to those of modern humans and Neanderthals. Other traits are much less developed. The species' small brain and the shape of its upper body are more like those of the pre-human Australopithecines and the very early human species, Homo habilis. The creature's fingers were more like those of Australopithecines and H. habilis, and so was its hip joint. The teeth get bigger toward the back of the mouth, which is a primitive trait. However, the teeth are small, simple, and set in jawbones that are light. Professor Stringer says that Homo nelidi's mix of traits shows once again how complicated the human family tree is. The way H. nelidi was built tells us that it walked on two legs with a modern gait and a good long-distance run. Its shoulders and fingers would have helped it climb and hang from trees. These features may have been passed down from an ancestor that was more like an ape. Since H. nelidi is only known from two sites in a single cave system, it is not known if the species only lived in southern Africa or if it lived in other places as well. If it was more common, scientists might have to re-examine other small fossils from all over Africa that have often been assigned to a small form of Homo erectus, another early human species. It took a while to figure out how old the Homo nelidi bones were. Scientists were surprised when they found out in 2017 that they were between 236,000 and 335,000 years old. Even though the fossils of H. nelidi are from a recent time, their anatomy suggests that they could be close to the beginning of the genus Homo in terms of evolution. This suggests that this is a relic species that still has many primitive traits. Importantly, Homo nelidi was young, which means it lived in Africa with other humans with bigger brains, including Homo sapiens, our own species. How the remains of Homo nelidi got to where they are now is a hot topic of discussion. The Ninelidi chamber, where they were found, is deep in the cave system, about 80 meters from any known door or opening to the surface. It must have always been dark there. There is no proof that people ever lived so far down in the caves, so how did the bones get there? Did they get there by themselves, or were they put there by people? 
The people who wrote the first Homo naledi studies ruled out ideas like water or animals pulling the bones there. Instead, they think that other people of the same species put the bodies in the caves on purpose and over and over again. Homo naledi had hands and wrists that were good for making stone tools, but so far no stone tools have been found with its fossils. But Professor Stringer thinks that it is highly likely that Nalidi's handiwork is already present in the archaeological record we have for southern Africa, but it is currently unrecognized or attributed to other human species. But how did Homo Nalidi stay alive when other humans had bigger brains? Homo Nalidi may have lived and eaten like other hunter-gatherers in Africa at the same time, such as late Homo heidelbergensis and early Homo sapiens based on their teeth and lower body structure. Although the tiny Homo floresiensis in Indonesia is an example of a species with a small brain that lived until not too long ago, it possibly survived because it lived on an island. Professor Stringer says that it's possible that Homo nalidi was geographically isolated for much of its development. In 2018, the journal PNAS reported on a study that looked at how Homo nalidi's brain left marks on its skull. The authors say that the results show that the growth of human brains did not follow a simple trend of gradual growth over time. Even though Homo naledi's frontal lobe was smaller than those of other humans, its shape of it was similar to that of other humans, not non-human homonyms or great apes. Other parts of the brain also looked more like humans than they did Australopithecines, with the same size brains but more primitive brains. The authors note that the parts of the brain that are similar to those of other humans have been linked to the development of tool use, language, and social behavior. This could mean that Homo naledi had some of the same behaviors as other humans, even though its brain was much smaller. The Lost City of Heraklion The Lost City of Heraklion, which was once Egypt's biggest port, was found underwater in the year 2000, after being lost for more than 2,000 years. It has been told in stories since the 12th century BC, and it has many connections to ancient Greece. Archaeologists say that the city was at its best in the last days of the pharaohs, but that it was destroyed over time by a mix of earthquakes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels. At the end of the 2nd century BC, probably because of a big storm, Heraklion's big buildings fell into the water. During the Roman Empire and the beginning of Arab rule, some of the people who lived there stayed in what was left of the city. However, by the end of the 8th century AD, the rest of Heraklion had sunk into the Mediterranean. Now, many of its untouchable riches have been brought up from the watery depths where they were sent and shown around the world. This gives us a look into the ancient Greek and Egyptian worlds. Heraklion was an ancient Egyptian port city on the Mediterranean Sea that was better known by its Egyptian name Thonis, and sometimes by the name Thonis Heraklion. It was 32 kilometers northeast of Alexandria. Its ruins can be found in Abukir Bay, 2.5 kilometers from the coast and just 10 meters below the surface. A stele found at the site shows that both the Egyptian and Greek names were used for the same city. Before Alexander the Great even thought about building Alexandria, Heraklion was at the height of its power. It was the main port of entry into Egypt for our ships coming from all over the Greek world. Thonis was the first built on a group of islands close to each other in the Nile Delta. It was cut up by canals and had a number of different ports and places to tie up. It had ferries, bridges, and pontoons to connect its docks, churches, and tower houses. The city was a trading port or emporium, and during the late period of ancient Egypt, it was the country's main port for foreign trade and tax collection. Khonsu, the son of Amun, was known to the Greeks as Heracles or Hercules, and Thonis had a big temple for him. Later, more and more people began to honor Amun. Between the 6th and 4th centuries BC, when the city was at its peak, a large temple to Amun Gareb, the most important god in Egypt at the time, stood in the middle of it. In the 4th century BC, Pharaoh Nectanebo I added many things to the temple. Temples in Heraklion that were dedicated to Osiris and other gods were known for healing miracles that brought people from all over Egypt. Every year in the month of Koyak, the mysteries of Osiris were celebrated in the city. During these amazing events, a statue of the god was taken from the temple of Amun to his shrine in Canopus in his ceremonial boat. In the 2nd century BC, Heraklion was hit by a number of tragedies. Around the same time, Alexander the Great started the city of Alexandria, which took over as Egypt's main port. Frank Gaudio and his team from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, or IESM, with help from the Egyptian Supreme Council, found the city again after it had been lost for more than 2,000 years when it sank into the Mediterranean Sea. Meteorite A small mining company's prospectors found the iron-based meteorite 
near the Somalian town of El Ali. It is thought to be 4.5 billion years old. The reddish rock was found in 2020, but local camel herders have known about it for hundreds of years. They used it as an anvil to sharpen knives and wrote songs and stories about it. The meteorite is the ninth biggest ever found. It weighs 15 tons and is 2 meters wide. But the two alien minerals were found by sending a 70-gram slice to the University of Alberta for testing. Professor Chris Hurd, who teaches in the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Alberta and is in charge of the meteorite collection, noticed the unusual crystals when he was putting the meteorite sample into a category. He explained, What happened was that during the classification process, when I was looking at the slides, we had on an electron microscope. I noticed some minerals that it couldn't really identify. Heard asked Andrew Lowcock, the head of the university's electron microprobe lab, to look at the samples. Lowcock was able to confirm within a day that they had two new minerals. This was proven by matching them to minerals that were made in France in the 1980s in a lab. The name Elalite comes from the place in Somalia where the meteorite was found. The name Elkin Stantonite comes from Lindy Elkin's Tanton. Heard picked the name to honor Elkin's Tanton's work. Lindy has done a lot of work on how the cores of planets form, how these iron nickel cores form, and the closest thing we have are iron meteorites. So it made sense to honor her and her work in science by naming a mineral after her. Heard says that studying the minerals and asteroids is, in a lot of ways, like exploring the solar system from your couch. We're trying to limit the wide range of situations that have existed in different planets. The piece of the asteroid that the team in Alberta looked at was a very small piece and it's possible that the rest of the rock has more minerals that are still unknown. But it's not clear if the experts will be able to learn more about the rock. Heard says that there are rumors that it was moved to China so that it could be sold there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any suggestions or comments, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Until next time, keep exploring!